Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for the wonderful introduction and for giving me your Saturday night and to everyone else who is also um, giving up a Saturday night here uh, or Sunday morning, depends on where in the world you are. Um, really appreciate the support. support. It's, it, it is it is mind blowing to see, quite frankly. But thank you so, thank you all so much. Um, so, as Tanya said, um, my name is Rachel Gray. I am a digital and traditional artist, and today we're going to be looking at my digital wildlife portraits. Um, I'm going to be doing this into like maybe two halves, so there will be time for your questions. Um, I know Tanya is going to be working the magic with those. Um, but don't worry, I, I will get to points where the, uh, I will answer any, any questions. Um, we're going to be looking at, um, first we're going to look into a little bit about my work, just in case you're not familiar with my works, and then we'll look into how I paint uh, fur and maybe some tips and tricks and how to do that. And then we'll, the second half will be about um, backgrounds and how I create backgrounds and how actually really important they are even though they are just backgrounds in that sense so i have got a little video here for you, for you all um, to see a little bit of my work so these are just examples uh, of of paintings that i've done that have been either in exhibitions or have been in like commissions or um i don't think there's actually any personal work in here actually no there's not looking at them there's not that it's all just uh work that's been uh either exhibited in in galleries events things like that or private commissions of people's um pets so there you go so that's it. i don't want to go too much into my my work because either like if you do want more information about my work there's my website which um is www.rgportraits.com. I will list that it towards the end. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more about my work, that's there too. So um, I will just dive straight in to um, Carl. And here we go. So I am on the very fancy um, new 2021 version, which I am really enjoying. So if, yeah, sorry. Uh, as for my portraits, like we just saw beforehand, they were like snippets of. Um, I, I, for me, I paint from either, I always pay for my own photography. So this means I check, trek through jungles, <laughs> I go on, I go on all kinds of trips to go and see these animals in the wild and then take my own photography, soak them up as much as I can, and then try and recreate that moment on canvas. Now, sometimes I will do this by, well, I take, I take thousands of photos, to be honest with you, I take tons of photos, so I'll take loads of photos. Sometimes I find the photo, like you can see right now, you've got the, this is, this is my photography and this is the painted portrait. Um, I don't try and do 100% uh, like photorealism. I get told my work is photorealism, but that's not really my aim. My aim is all about the animals. It's all about what, what's going on with them, what's just sharing that moment I got of them on canvas. That's like my main goal. So you can see here that if I was trying to do photorealism, I would keep in this like water fountain thing going on, and I haven't. I've kind of kept gone with this more infinity look to help, to, just to help you focus more on these guys. Um, having a little chat or whatever they were doing it was just it was great to watch them um now if i don't get the photograph that i think i'm going to paint from which can happen and has happened lots um i take my own photography so i use my own oh hello why are you doing that there we go i use my own photography in order to um capture the moment or capture just the environment or a general gist or vibe of what the place was like um so that means when i do come to my canvas uh in in, in coral i know kind of what i'm doing and like tanya said i do everything from scratch like um i i start with a blank canvas and then i paint sketch on it paint from there but i do use my photographs as reference for me personally, I find if I use images from Google, it's too cold. There's nothing for me to work from. There's nothing, um, and that might not be the case for everybody, but it certainly is me. I need to see the animal. I need to 
see how it moves. I need to see how it interacts with other animals, how it interacts with itself. Just generally soak up as much as I can in order to try and uh, try and invest at least to get that moment on canvas. Um, so today we're going to talk about two different things, backgrounds. We're going to talk about backgrounds and we're going to talk about furs. Um, when I first started painting fur, I just thought, oh yeah, well, I'll just paint fur and, and once I get hold of fur, I'll be fine. Like once I get the idea of how it works, I'll be good. And I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> I couldn't have been more wrong. Um, I'm hoping all is, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, Tanya, I hope you can hear everything. I uh, hope everything's good. Everything is great. Awesome. Can you hear great. me? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, just do you know what? Okay. Yeah, before you move on, and I don't know either, somebody asked a question. So your very top example here, what yep. kind of animal is that? <laughs> they are capybaras. Um, they are like giant, like uh, guinea pigs. They're huge. Um, they're like the size of a medium-sized dog, but they're oh very God. well built. They're like built like Rottweilers. They've got like, but they're not like that temperament. Their ears are very soft, but their fur is almost like straw. Wow. I've never heard of this animal. So cool. <laughs> yeah, they're very, um, their fur is very stiff and straw like and sits very weird. Because they're wet, it gives it this kind of like, you can see the shape of the animal and things like that. And it kind of floats in the water, like how hair floats, floats in the water. But these guys, they're, um, I believe they're Australian. Um, the these ears that they have twitch um a little bit like they do do like the whole little de deer flicker with the ear but they are like hamster ears they're very soft to the touch so yeah giant hamsters giant uh, guinea pig kind of vibe <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> you're welcome i'm glad i'm glad that's one of the questions yeah um let's they, they're wonderful to see. I've always enjoyed watching all the animals that I've had the amazing opportunity to do so. Um, like you've got the caracal cat, Tia Fountain. This was in the wild. This was this was insane to see in the wild. Um, and then you've got the wild dogs. Um, I actually I'm actually on the ground with them here. That's how I've got that level of shot. Like I'm eye level with them. So I am actually sitting on the ground taking photos of them. Um, and here I am for for the last one for the um, the zebras. Uh, they they fought for for hours, for hours and hours and hours. So I've got quite a lot of photos of them. But that one's one of my favourites because it's just you can just see the vastness of the area. And you can just it, yeah, it, it just makes it more dramatic to me. Um, so yeah, okay. So as for so this is the this is my photography. This is photograph the portrait. What I'm going to talk about now is the fur and how I naively thought when I first started painting fur. Oh yeah, it's fur. It's like once you get the hang of it, it should be all right, right? <laughs> I was so wrong. Um, so you've got all different types of furs. Um, now I'm going to show you snippets of my portrait so I can kind of show you how what I mean. Um, things like this one is from the from a panda who have got the iconic black patches on their eyes, um, the white, mainly the white head and the black nose and then, and then the black ears, which you can't see right now. Um, as an artist, you have to get this right. This can't look smudgy and blurred and all this sort of stuff because then it just looks like you haven't, you, you, it, it, it ruins the whole image because you haven't got it right. So you really need to get this idea of, okay, so it's thick fur, but it's not too thick because I still need to sculpt it to make the face and I need to make sure the eye looks like it looks like the panda eye. So you've got icon iconic fur. You've got furs like leopards, um, which is also very dramatic and very eye-catching and something you have to get right because it's when you see the leopard, if the spots don't look right, you're kind of thinking, well, what's going on there? So you've got spots and rosettes um, and this will you can use the spots to help define the animal but it's it's another fur that I wasn't used to because it's nowhere near as thick as the panda fur but it's still just as important to get the the black spots or rosettes right um 
then you've got things like you've got to you've got to start worrying about things like um well not worrying <laughs> not worrying as such but you've got to start thinking things about um lighting now this was a, a piece from a portrait in a paint that I painted of a uh, a macaque which is a monkey in in the tropics so the light is it's more in light so it's super harsh it's very um it's it's so harsh it's so bright that it's making the animal's ear glow like you know when you stick your finger over, over a torch and it gives you that kind of glowing look and you on your thumb animals are the exact same so they his ear was glowing but then you've got to think about the fear in the sense that okay so it's bright white but then the shadow is in black the shadow is actually the color of the fur to begin with because you need to show the light coming in from, from where it's coming at from, from its light source and then blending in with the fur and then without losing the look of the animal if that makes if, if that's making any sense um then you've also got other things like elements like like water <laughs> water changes animals fear unbelievably so like you'll know you'll notice this yourself if you put your pet like your dog or your cat in the bath and it's all fluffy and then next minute it's dead skinny and <laughs> it looks all wet and bedraggled um animals can have a similar thing they it depends on their coat if they have an oily coat like this otter um it completely changes the color you've got to start thinking about how light is reflect, reflecting off the um, off the off the oil and the how basically how drenched is the animal. Um, you've also got to think of spiky fur because fur becomes spiky when wet, just like your hair. If you jump in the in a, in a pool and then you come out and your hair is all like stuck together, same with animals. So you've got to think how that how that looks and how that lies on. On itself and and if it's if it's double coated animal like does it still look like fluffy um because an otter doesn't look that skinny they look streamlined but they don't look skinny they don't look bath like dog out the bath kind of skinny they look streamlined and muscular and stuff so you've kind of got to um take that into account um then it kind of goes on to a complete opposite end of the scale is you've got that is so smooth and so comes so becomes so fine it turns into it just moves onto skin but you've got as an artist you've got to try and um make this look so it doesn't look like it's a fluffy horse although we all want a fluffy horse <laughs> you've kind of got to if someone's commissioned you to paint a horse you don't want it looking all like fluffed out when the horse itself isn't um uh so you were learning how to paint paint fair finely enough so it still keeps the shape of the animal uh and also the colors of the animal because uh, the horse's nose the fair will stop you'll have like big hairs here but the fair will stop around here and it'll go on the skin but when you look at a horse you don't really notice that so you kind of have to ma make the magic happen on that front as well um, don't worry, I will. I, I am tying this together. <laughs> if you're still with me, I am going to tie this together. Um, and lastly, no, it makes perfect sense. But um, okay. you know, I had a question come up, which Joseph is asking: um, Are you using a smartphone or a digital camera to take your photos, and which one? Okay. Okay, I take uh, a, I use my camera. I use a digital camera. I have a Sony Sony camera. Um, I have a few Sony cameras. I have ones with really large lenses, which take like both hands in order to to maneuver. <laughs> and I'm one of these people that sit there for a while and wait for the animal to turn up and and uh, sit with my Sony camera. Um, I will also sketch if the animal comes close enough or if the animal's kicking around for a bit. I will. Take the opportunity and try and do a few sketches um but mainly i am just taking photographs and watching the animal seeing how the fur moves seeing how it looks in the light seeing how its character character is seeing how seeing if it does anything like if it does something different it, maybe it actually dead eye looks at me and and my my mind is blown and i'm like yeah that's it okay cool we're doing this 
or maybe maybe it interacts with an animal maybe it's like the macaque here and they are so cheeky and lively and feisty so they will they will like push each other out of trees and stuff for giggles so they're an absolute delight to watch and you can watch them for hours because there's normally a big group of them and they don't do much um otters however um when watching them they don't stick around for much they'll sit on their log or their rock uh, give you a bit of a stare down a bit of a head bob and then they'll jump in the water so you haven't got that much so you've got to wait until they come back out again it's completely on the animals terms um to what i can actually paint uh but yeah i yeah i would say so definitely not my phone my phone isn't strong enough to get high enough quality photos or zoom in as far or I can do videos on my phone if I just need something quick to remind me um, because before I start painting I look at my reference and if I have other photos I'll have them playing um, on a digital like uh, it's a photo display and I have them playing there so it just kind of reimmerses me back in that mode so I can know what I'm painting. Um, getting in the right headspace is a very big deal for me not in the sense that uh, oh, I need inspiration or to paint because I paint every day without shadow of a doubt. I paint every day. So it's more about just getting me in that zone, if that makes sense. Hopefully that answers the question, I'm hoping. Yes, thank you. No <laughs> further questions about that. Okay, cool. Okay, so the last one was I just popped up is this one, which is um, I know it's not fair, it's feathers, but once you start painting animals, you, feathers just become part of this. And I actually would say that learning to paint fur leads towards painting feathers as well. They are quite similar. If you know how to, once you start practicing with them, they all come, not naturally, but you, you, it's not that much of a leap to start on feathers if you're already painting fur. Um, so I'm hoping this kind of shows you the different types and styles of fur. It definitely um, opened my eyes when I thought about this uh, a while ago when I was thinking, okay, when I first started painting fur, fur I thought I could just do one and that'd be fine. But actually there's so many different types. The elements matter hugely. Um, and the two things I would, the two tips I would say coming out of this, if you're thinking of, or if you already are painting, this is for any level, any career level, like. I am still learning this now. I'm still perfecting this now. Um, <laughs> it's still very much vital to how I paint today. Um, two things I would definitely say would be your use of color and direction of paint. Now, I'm not, if you remember both those things when you paint your next portrait or piece or at, like animal, you will see a difference in how you improve each time because for me, I've got the images that I'm showing you and I've learned more after each portrait I've done because it's a different animal, it's a different element, it's something new to look at, something different to learn. But the two things that have definitely stood through, like definitely been the same throughout this is the use of color and the direction of paint. Like if you can practice those when you, or are mindful of those when you're painting, you'll see an improvement. You will definitely see an improvement because it's it's the only thing I would say that definitely links, well, the only two things that definitely link all these together. That's feathers as well. Um, now, what I mean by that is, I'll talk about direction of fur first. So here you've got one of my portraits of the Malaysian tiger, um, magnificently sitting in water and it, it's just it was it was they're just epic I, I can't get enough of the Malaysian tiger right now um in fact I've just finished a painting of the Malaysian tiger so no I can't get enough of these but like I was saying about fur beforehand you, you've got your light source coming in from the right hand side um because it's shining on the shoulder here and down to the elbow but he, at the top here I'm hoping that you guys can see my little cursor here at the top here you've got fur that isn't wet like along here as well you haven't got fur that's wet but from here downwards you've got fur that is wet that's because he decided that he would go up to his basically his neck in water 
and then he sat back up again so all this is wet and in a photograph it, it's it's very clear but then trying to create that in a painting you have got to be very mindful of colors because you need to make sure this top area looks fluffy and kind of dense like a tiger's coat it's kind of got this thick undeniable stripes like it, it's very it's very striking it's very thick but when wet I can't go make them looking too skinny because it'll make him look ill or it'll make him look older and he wasn't an old tiger he didn't well I don't know how old he was but he doesn't look that old um he looked very muscular so you've got to be aware that you've got the direction of which you paint matters um so here this this piece here is a zoomed in version of this small little area here I hope you guys can see that um now the reason I've picked this this part here is because it's very easy to see um where the direction of the paint is going and by that I mean and let's just see yeah for some reason my weapon just disconnected oh and uh, I imagine this, this question's already come up just in case I haven't the brush I use is um blender blender bristle and artist and artist oils I I do my entire painting with this brush so I hope Carl never gets rid of this brush because <laughs> I create the whole thing in this brush um as for layers I use um when I was not so confident I use three layers so the background layer a layer for the eye and then a layer for the rest of the animal so the tiger and then what I did was I merged the two for the 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 tiger and the eye painted them together then I merged the background to the tiger itself so it all ends up on one layer um, these can take anywhere between because some of these sizes are quite small and some are quite big quite small to me would be a three quite big would be about five foot or six foot wide or and then six foot tall um, and I normally paint the side, so I normally get my canvas to the, the, the right inches. I don't, I never blow up my work. Um, I always have it to the inches that it's gonna be printed at, slightly, slightly bigger. So that means when they do have like a, an area to bleed on the, when they print or when they like crop it slightly, it's, it's no, I'm not panicking, I'm not losing any of the painting because I already kind of prepped for that in advance. But yeah, that's the only brush I use. I use it in different sizes. Um, you'll see me use it in a little bit to show you how, how I do this. Um, but now, since I've been doing this for so long, I kind of only do two layers. So I'll, I'll paint the whole animal on one layer. I'll paint the background on another layer. Then I'll merge the two and blend my tiger or whatever the animal is into it and then do the whiskers last. The whiskers are always one of the, the last thing, things I do because um, the background, the lighting of the background, like the colors in the background, and the colors on the animal are very important when doing the whiskers. Um, but I won't go into whiskers because that's a whole, that's a whole different, that's a whole different show. <laughs> um, right, as I was saying about here about the uh, the direction of fear. Okay, cool, my weapon is the same hello now, cool. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, by this, I mean, if you look at this one real quick, see, I only do two layers. So all these layers on here right now is making me sweat a little, not going to lie, but here we go. Um, so you can see here that this is like the, hello, there we go, there we go, cooking gas. Okay. So here is like the elbow of the animal. Um, and the direction of the fur, because you've got to remember this has got stripes as well, so you don't want to lose those, because this is a zoomed in piece. So when it comes to zoomed out, you still need the definition of those stripes, because tigers don't have blurred out or like wonky stripes that you can clearly see that it's a tiger. Um, lightning comes into this, but first I'll talk about directions. So you've got the, the brush strokes are coming this way, then they're going that way, and then they're flicking out slightly. Do you see what I mean? So this helps with the muscle coming down this way. 
um, and then you've got the the elbow here, but then you've got like the basically the rib cage coming into the into the water down here. Um, sorry, this is a lot of red lines, which might not make sense. I'm just gonna quickly move some. Okay, so you've got the rib cage here. Um, now this bit, I painted the fur going downwards, so going in this direction, because I don't want to have the fur because currently the fur is going this direction. Um, and I've painted the fur going down. Um, the reason for this is because your eye follows that direction of the paint. Naturally, when you zoom in and look at this, or even just from this distance, your eye follows this going around this, this way. It follows the fur going in this way. It follows the fur going down. It follows the fur going out. It follows the fur going round. So your eye will naturally glide over the, over the portrait. So you need to paint in a direction that helps this. That helps build the form and shape of your of the, of the animal whilst it works in your favor because it helps build more of a 3d form it helps shows weight it helps shows muscle structure um and it makes it look not so flat because if i painted the whole thing just going straight down it will it'll for it will shorten them for, for start off it'll make them look short in the shoulder um and it would it wouldn't really help with the wet fur. The wet fur is being pushed back by the water. So when he sat in the water, the water has gone this way and over him. So I need to make sure I keep this true to form in um, in, in, in the painting. Um, so this means with a lot smaller brush, painting a lot of times, going in one direction and then painting in another. Um, is there any questions on this at all? Yeah, yeah. We've got some questions coming in. So one is, do you make adjustments to the blender bristle brush? Because they noticed in your intro paintings, um, some fur is very different than others. And do you achieve that look just via the stylus or do you adjust the brush on your own? um by i do it by the stylus so what i do is it's, it's more about smoothing it out or being clever with colors um because like if i'm painting um i don't change the brush at all that is factory settings straight out of fresh out of coral kind of untouched gold right there <laughs> um I I use it by I do it by doing different um, sizes of the brush. So to get like the horse fur, for example, I will use a thinner brush, so a smaller size, in order to help me create that um, smoother look. Um, I, I normally have a brush size when I'm painting. I don't know if I'm painting something like 25 by 25 inches. My brush size is normally about eight for the details and 16 for bigger details. And then the background's a lot bigger, but, uh, and then smaller again for the whiskers. But that's not gospel. Like that's not something to like aim at like, oh, it must be this size. It must be this size. So I've just done a painting with another tiger and my brush size for the majority of that was like 16 to 33. So it's, it really depends on what you're painting and what you feel comfortable in. Because this takes an age. This is this is a long game. This isn't something that I like. Um, if I paint with a lot bigger brush, it gets done quicker. But for example, the piece you're looking at right now, it, this is a lot smaller in size. But that took about what about eighty hours, ninety hours, um, and that's it all done and complete. There's no pattern brushes. There's no filters. There's no edits afterwards there's no photoshop there's this is purely coral and and this brush this this piece of gold right here <laughs> people are curious because looking at the layers we can't tell um do you start with the background first or the subject matter i start with the subject matter first so what i'll do is i'll have my reference photographs around me or like i said earlier and then i will sketch sketch out the animal however that is um and then i will paint directly on top of that sketch 
Um, and then I will just zoom in to actual size. So I will be working on a very small, very, very small area for a very, for like, if I was working on something like that for a while, um, if, I'm, if, it, if it's a good day, I get something like that done. <laughs> um, and I will spend a lot of time um, zoomed really far in and looking at my colors. First I'll splodge a bit of color around so I know generally what I'm doing. Um, and then I'll keep looking back at the reference photograph thinking, okay, is there greens in there? Is there blues in there? And then I'll paint it and I'll go over my paint and loads. I kind of treat it uh, very traditionally, even though it's digital. Um, I work over my colors quite a lot. I work over the, the sketch disappears disappears completely. There is a sketch in, in here, under here somewhere. But you, if I've ever erased that right now, you wouldn't see anything. You would just see white paper. Um, yeah, I think I think that answered the question, I think, I hope. Yeah, it, it oh, looks cool. that way. Um, I'm just reading, let's see. There is a question, but you have two layers, the background and the animal, but within the animal layer, how do yeah. you separate the layers there, short versus longer fur? And somebody else, you kind of said you work at actual size, sometimes you zoom in, but there's curiosity as to how far should you zoom in to accomplish details. Um, I zoom in to 100% um, to, re to get the eye, for example, I will zoom in like 100% just to make sure the eye itself can take me anywhere between one to two hours just per eye. Um, and I will zoom in to about, 100% so I'll look at my photographs and I'll look at different photographs that I've maybe caught the eye like the colors of the eye better than maybe the photograph that I was thinking of um, and I'll zoom in and I'll just look at the colors and kind of splodge them in I kind of build upon it it's not like I paint a stroke and it's perfect and that's what stays I build upon it but I don't use layers for that I literally just work on top of my own work um, uh, Zoom, I wouldn't suggest zooming in the whole time because you can lose focus of what is actually going on. What I, what I mean by that is if you're painting and you zoomed into a tiny little space right here and then you just, you, then you've moved on to this bit. But then by the time you've got to this bit and you zoom out, you realize actually this is, it's looking like the, the weight's all off or the color, like the, the lighting is off. Um, I will paint it all and then I'll come back and um, I can go back over and, and do some more of the lighting. So I will zoom it out something similar to this and go back in to work out where I actually want to bring out more highlights or where I need to darken my shadows a bit, um, where I need to give more sense of depth or more sense of perspective and things like that. But my sketch, that will kind of take care of where, like proportions and scale and then I'm just going to kind of trust my gut that I've got the sketch right uh, and start painting uh, within that uh, yeah do you actually have the photo sitting in front of you or do you work from reference image in painter um I haven't really got to grips with the reference image in painting yet I've had I have um, I've had in the past the photo next to me because I kind of just want my painting screen just to be the painting. Like uh, I just want it to be that. I do want to play around with the um, the reference photo thing because that it does look fun. Um, what I do is I'll either have the photo on an iPad next to me, or I will have it physically printed next to me, um, or I'll have it on the iPad, and then I've also got a uh, photo display screen, which is basically like a digital screen that just keeps rotating photos. And I will just have that on rotate. So it means it gives me the, the it takes me back. Like I will remember them, I'll see a photo and be like, oh yeah, remember that? And then it'll just, it'll take me back to that zone. And then I'll look at my paintings on the side and I'll paint from that. Okay, um, I don't wanna keep asking too many questions, but <laughs> because- oh, go for it not actually sampling from the photo in Painter, how do you ensure that you get the colors right? 
Um, the honest answer is blood, sweat and tears. The honest answer is there is no shortcut. There is no kind of, have I got the colors 100% right? No, there's no way, there, there's not, it's a painting. Um, I'm, go I'm not going for photorealism, I'm going for the moments, I'm trying to recreate the moment that I had with the animal so you guys can see, I don't know what the animal's thinking, what, or what it was doing, or just an off moment, or like a, I don't know, just a unique moment with the animal. It makes you, I try to kind of move in the background rather than like the animals definitely the forefront, but to get the colors, I just use my eye. And I use, I'm going to show you a little bit into color in a minute, but like I will, um, it's practice. To be honest with you, I wish I could say, you know what, press this, do that, tap your heel three times and it's magic. I have to love to say that, but it's practice. Um, I've been doing this for a very, well, it feels like a very long time. Um, and I do it daily. So I'm always trying to improve or see my weaknesses. And once I'll zoom out the, the piece as well. So if I'm painting like this, I will definitely zoom it out to see what's going on and then rectify it from there. Um, I will leave sticky notes to my screen or the wall, like the surroundings around me or desk and say, okay, check out the right nostril it looks too green or something or I'll leave a note saying um third back whisker looking off light is not right you know, that sounds crazy saying it out loud <laughs> no I don't think so okay two more things and I'm gonna let you move on to um your demo but there are questions do you always paint at the same size and is there an average amount of time that it takes for your, your paintings okay the smaller the size the quicker they take the larger obviously the longer especially if you've got two animals like in some of my paintings you'll see there's two animals um, um they take double the time the longest one so far i think it's been about 260 hours i think that's the longest one so far um, to be honest with you, I kind of lost count. <laughs> but Will was a bit of a blur when I was doing that one, or doing a few like that. Um, the average sizes, um, at the moment, I would say, well, the average sizes that I'm doing at the minute is about 40 inches by 50, 50 odd inches, 55 inches, something like that, or maybe, no, 45 inches by 50. Um, that would say about be the average size I'm painting at the moment. Um, smaller pieces. Uh, like this one, this one is probably like this tiger right now that you're seeing is anywhere between, I think I'm stabbing in the dark here, so don't, don't quote me on this one, but I think it's roughly about 25 inches by 30, 35, 33, 32 inches, I think, something roughly like that. Um, but it more depends on the collection that I'm making because I exhibit these works, so I work out what works best within a collection and how best we represent that collection like i had pieces for the national gallery i've got pieces going on tour it's you work out what works best as a whole as a collection first so you go through all your photos you work it all out you spread them all everywhere you look like yeah it looks like a crime scene um <laughs> and you spread them all out and you work out which one's best then you select them and then you literally sit on it for a couple of days to keep going back and tweaking it and making which ones do you think is is working best you look at all your sketches you start sketching out um at this point you can either scrap or bring in another one and then once that's kind of locked in in your mind you just kind of know you're like yep this is it i've worked it all out this flows this works well um it shows, it represents what I what I wanted to represent. It works well with the collaboration because of what they want to represent. Um, it works for as an artist of what I want to highlight or what I want to show, or that sort of thing. And then I will paint them to size of of that. So that was a that was a really long winded answer. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yeah, I think we're good now. Okay, awesome.
I wish I, I wish there is like a, a quick fix like oh yeah guys you just press these buttons and you know what it goes poof and does it all for you but honestly it's just it's it's chase it's just chasing it and going for it and make uh, I say make the magic happen and that's that's what it is so yeah anywho <laughs> um and thank you for the questions I'm really loving the questions so thank you for them uh, Tanya and for those who are asking it's wonderful to hear what you guys are thinking and uh, I, I do enjoy answering the questions so here we've got um, how I mentioned earlier about direction you've also got color color is is vital um, color can really d define can really make or break a piece like if you get the colors wrong it might not look it might look too yellow for a tiger or it might look its eyes might look too bright or it's or it's striped like might look too too brown and it this all takes practice so what i'm going to quickly demo you here now forgive me like i said earlier that this normally me painting some like for me to paint an ear Eve will will take hours, so I'm going to do something in, in like a minute or two here. <laughs> so please forgive the crudeness of it. Um, but I will do. I will show you what I mean. Like for example, in the version on the left is something I did in exactly the same amount of time. This took me probably about two minutes. Um, I'm gonna I am gonna get a bigger brush though because this is uh, I want to get this done I'm relatively sharpish. Hey, we'll go into small brush first to do the outline. Okay. So this version, for example, is only using black as a shadow or black as, as a way to define shadows or give definition. Now, as, as cool as that is, it, you, to get what, how I do it, for me, I need to do more than that. I need to show more than just black because, oh, hello. See, I'm not organized. I've got like layers for this here and stuff. I'm not, see, this layer thing, swear, it's <laughs> it's definitely throwing me a little bit. I'm not used to so many layers. Okay. Um, so there's a tiny bit of a lag, but what, oh, hello. Yeah, there's a major lag. What's going on here? There we go. So this is going to be very crudely done. Again, just forgive me. Yeah, is that right? So there's basically your ear. Now, what we are gonna do is instead of using black, like just try this, like it's, you don't have to do this. This is just something, this is just something I would say give a will and see how it works out for you. It's, it's hard to begin with because it's a lot of work. Um, it means that whatever you do normally is now gonna take five times as long. But for me, I feel it's completely worth it. So rather than looking at like black, for the inside of the ear. Try and like mix up a bit. Get some blues in there, get some, get some purples, get some, throw in some greens. Like you'd be surprised how far green can like help you out. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna be very crudely done. This is just gonna be a general gist. So we have something generally to work from. Um, if, if all allows, maybe it won't allow too much, so I'll just do the top half. <laughs> <laughs> um, now this is a big brush what we're working on right now we're like 85.7 now this is huge like I wouldn't like for me this is huge I wouldn't work on this normally um, when when painting but I'm going to throw some green in here just so you can, guys can see what I'm on about um, like if you use purples and blues to help with your shadows to help with your shading, to help with the, it just gives it, it gives it this more perspective. It gives it an element of light and shadow rather than just here you've just, if the light's hitting this right now, I can't really tell where the light is hitting this. I would say it's hitting maybe a little bit of the fur here, like the feathered fur into the ear and a little bit on the top um, and maybe a tiny piece down here. But inside of the ear, I've kind of lost this huge space, which is actually really, can really help a, uh, painting because ears are such a vital part of the animal like not just for the animal but as a painter you can express so much expression with an ear um 
the yeah the light eyebrows or light eyes if if the ears of you know yourself if you look at your dog or you look at your horse or any animal really if it flattens its ears you know it's not too chipper but if its ears are all sprightly and pricked up in front of you then you know it's 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 good so <laughs> that was a very basic explanation sorry guys but yeah i'm uh let's see okay so here we go so i'm gonna throw some of the fur back in here now you'll see that it tapers this is what i love about this brush and I just just take a moment to just enjoy this brush you ready i'm just wipe it across here well she says that there you go see you see how it's kind of disappears that the reason i love this brush is because it doesn't it doesn't smudge now i can't stand smudging smudging is something it just it just irks my soul somehow but um it doesn't smudge it doesn't it it doesn't just kind of like it blends which is a huge difference for me when i'm using the when i'm using the brushes i've got to think about okay i don't want something that's just gonna smudge the the color around or kind of because it loses its definition it loses its vibrancy in my opinion whereas this keeps it to a point where you can actually mix the colors it's like a traditional oil paint and i know that's what the brush is called so that's what helps but do, do you know what i mean is any of this making sense it makes perfect sense it's actually what painter is best known for oh and honestly traditional media for me, it is the, I know I'm on coral and stuff here, but really it is the, the perfect mix of, um, of mixing digital and traditional. Like when I first started out, I didn't start digital painting until I was like 18. Um, which doesn't, it sounds, that sounds old to me when I see like people today with like all kinds of, like the iPad pros and stuff. Like imagine doing that back in the day, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be wild. Like just be on an iPad pro. <laughs> um i am for those who are asking um i don't know if they have asked yet but for those who are i am on a wacom intuos pro small that's what i'm on right now um i'm using uh coral 2021 and the blender brush that's that's basically my setup that's that's me Thank you for answering the welcome question because that was asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's always asked. It's always asked. But yeah, I am on a uh, Wacom Intuos Pro Small. That's what I'm on right now. And that's what I've painted my, like, don't get me wrong, the Cintiq looks absolutely epic and amazing. But and that, the one I'm on is a, is a, is a Wacom uh, Intuos Pro Small. And it's easy to travel with. It is, it is, it's one, that's one of the beauties that it's easy to travel with. You can just kind of up and go. Um, I haven't, in all honesty, I haven't done that in a while because I'm like, I'm, I used to be one of those those people, them annoying people in Starbucks <laughs> who sit there all day with like a coffee that's like, or with a hot chocolate that's really cold um, and, and, and paint. But now I'm, um, I'm, I'm definitely a stay at the studio, or blast the music kind of kind of vibe. So well, I'm kind of the world, sorry, the world changed on us, right, Rachel? It's harder oh, to go anywhere. Yeah. Well, what would people do right now to to, to be that annoying to, to be that person in Starbucks and just sit and chill and hang out with people? We are uh yeah, we are back in lockdown right now, so so yeah. And for those okay. of you who don't know, you probably do know, but Rachel is in Malaysia. Yeah. I, am I mean, a, I, we have a lot of information about you out there, but um, unless they went to your website, they may not have known that. Yeah, I am a British artist currently based in Malaysia. Um, and I absolutely love it here. It's magical. Not just for the for the for the people and the food, but the animal the, the animals here, the the diversity of animals is is insane. 
that I'm kind of like I'm making a bit of a bit of a mess of this. <laughs> Sorry about this. But what my point is is um, for some reason my colors aren't shown as bright. I think it's my my screen brightness isn't isn't up there. Um, I'm, my eyes are very sensitive, so I always have the screen brightness on like the absolute minimum. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's my fault, not 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 Carol's fault. But hopefully, there you go. I've just stuck up the ball. Um, hopefully, you can see the, what the point is that I'm trying to make here is that you can get more of a range of depth of field and 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 uh, perspective with use of color. So rather than using like a black color here, try mix it in with blues, yellows. Mainly, well, yeah. Try blue, try blues and purples first, because they're like cool colors, and they will help uh, give a sense of depth. Because if you look at an animal's ear, it's not just black. Like if the light's coming in from here, you're gonna get some light source here. So that means from here on, well, maybe about here onwards, you've got to start going lighter from the from from your deepest color out until you, you, your highlight color. Um, but if you just do plain black you've already you've already ended that you haven't allowed that conversation to happen which is definitely something that needs to happen because light literally seeps into everything um so i will use if i know i'm going to do a background color that's green or whatever my background color is i will try and mix that into the outer edges so i will try and mix some greens in there so that so it reflects because if you have sorry if you have white fur um or skin, it will reflect the uh, the surroundings. Or if you have water nearby, or if it's rained, there'll be reflections on the leaves that reflect onto the animal. So I'm I'm going to just leave this here because I'm, I'm I'm worried that I'm, I'm over overworking here, and I can always come back if if we have more time or anything. But I'm hoping I'm hoping there's a gist there that you can kind of see what I mean that it's just have a go like just take my word for it have a go rather than using black try using dark blues dark purples and in your highlights try instead of just going pure white try and mix it in with some lighter blues like some maybe some like a bit more electric blues like you'll see in my my paintings there is all different kinds of colors in there there is colors that you don't even expect i will use bright yellows like neon blues almost into the ears and then uh, blend them down um, to kind of help out show that the fur is in front of the actual ear and then there's fur inside the ear. Um, I'm hoping that's come across a little bit today. Yeah, it makes sense to me. And when we don't get a ton of questions, that's my cue that I think people understand the concepts. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I I will leave leave that there, um, and you'll have to take my word for me that I can paint. Because <laughs> I didn't exactly go to bat plan, but hey, we're live. Let let let's roll with it. Um, okay, so moving on from colors and directions, the other thing that I mentioned, like this is uh, the other thing I, I mentioned, was backgrounds. Now you'll notice when you see my work, if you're familiar with my work or if you see my work, that I use um, a lot of this mulchy kind of background. Um, I love this mulchy background at the moment because my, as I said earlier, my focus point is the animal itself. So unless it's being said by a client to include a background, if it's like a, uh, for example, it's like a racehorse or something, they want the stables in the background, or if it's like a show dog and they want the the surroundings and that makes sense but for me when i'm exhibiting pieces or if i'm doing things like that i will do a multi back multi kind of background and by multi i mean it's kind of blurred blended background um because i want the focus to be on the animal and i just want a general mood placed behind it and i i love it like i i'm hooked on this but i'll show you how to do that in a little minute um the other background i do a lot of is water um i love painting animals in water, next to water, near water, because animals become so different when they're near, near water. They either, it's, it's, you either get like a, 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 
two for one kind of thing because you get the animal and then you get the reflection of the animal so for me I love that it's like I get to paint the animal twice because it's in the reflections as well um it it just makes it very dynamic it, like as a, as a piece but for the animal it's kind of um animals are very different so either they're very wary because they've got to keep an eye out for uh, this is in wild animals um they've got to keep keep a keep aware of if there's any prey about um or if there's any predators most more, yeah more if there's any predators so if they go to the water they're very alert they're very on edge if there's a group of zebras or something like that they're all like chittering and chatting short, talking to each other flicking their ears signaling to each other to the it's who's going where and what's going on um but you even get that without being like a predator and prey you get it with um animals will have fun in the water like you'll see elephants have fun in the water you'll see baby animals have fun in the water you'll see animals lounging around the water cooling off or you'll have animals like if you have a gazelle you might have a gem spot turn up and that has right of way so all the all the uh, gazelles are going to move to the side and stay out in the gem spot's way so water for me i always enjoy painting it because it's always you you literally never know what you're gonna get when you see animals in water um, but as I said, I do paint backgrounds for um, for people who wish for that. So you've got like the Komodo dragon with the dragons behind. They were absolutely magical to see in the wild. And then you've got people's pets. I also paint people's pets. Um, so you've got either the comforts of their bed or their favorite cushion or, or another pet next to them. Um, and then lastly, I've got the uh, mulchy background again because this, as I said, is you can see just by looking at these, these ones in particular, that the and uh, this one, the, the focus is definitely the animal, whereas this is more of a focus on the environment the animal is in as well as the animal. Whereas this is just it just the eye is drawn straight straight to the animal. The background's there helps create a mood, but it's it's mainly the animal itself. Um so I am gonna all permit, there we go. I'm going to show you a little bit behind the scenes. Um, so this is my photograph of the kingfisher. Um, this was in Borneo. This was on a private trek we were going to take. Because um, uh, I take all my camera gear with me. So we normally go on private tour because I'm normally a, a pain to trek with because I am taking 80,000 photos and I'm like looking at stuff and I'm looking at leaves. I'm, I'm generally being the slow one. Um, so this was actually, the, the beauty of wildlife is that it doesn't work on cue, it just does whatever it wants, when it wants. So this is like crack of dawn in the middle of a jungle and we're eating breakfast, which is um, uh, fried noodles and baked beans with the strongest black tea you've ever had in your life. And I'm sitting there with my camera waking up ready to start trekking and, and seeing what we can see and out of nowhere like literally nowhere there's just this swampy pond and all this like thick bench jungle this kingfisher just appears and just sits on this branch and it was epic i i didn't eat the rest of my food because i we had to go but I, I caught the kingfisher so that was well worth missing out on some of the food for me um so the moment that I'm telling you now is something I try and recreate. I know I keep saying this, but it's it's vital to what I do. Like you'll see that he's kind of hunched over. He was very protective of his little perch, like this little twig he's got going on. It was like it, this was his, and he was making. He's he's only small. He's only about the size of your hand, but he's like letting you know that this is him. Like he is small, but he's mighty. Do you know what I mean? Like this is his. So when I come to painting backgrounds, um. Oh, hello, there we go. Just a little slow. Um, this is one of the backgrounds I did first. Now you get to see the kingfish in all its glory, but the background is of these like blurred out leaves. Now the problem with this is for me, your eye is automatically drawn to, to the blue of the bird and the yellow, and then you follow it, but then your eye is all over the show with these leaves or this like kind of semi-detailed background, which as an artist, you've got to, for me personally, I'm saying I've got to step back and think, is this the image I had in mind? Is this the best view of the animal? Is this conveying the image, the the, the thing I had in, in my head? 
Um, and the answer is no. Um, even when I put all that work in to making that background, I thought I had it. And I came by next morning, I was like, nope, I'm scrapping it. That's, that's just not working. I can't do that. It's not, it's not right. Um, so then I repaint it. Now, here you can see that there is still some definition of, of bushes, leaves, that sort of stuff in a very loose abstract kind of term. But you can see that there is shapes and things going on here. Um, for me, it was important to kind of blur the lines of this because I wanted to show that the jungle is thick and dense and it just consumes you once you look at it because your eyes are all over the show and it's it's just it's so dense <laughs> it's amazing but it's so dense but I thought okay how can I how can I do this so I came up with this background and then I put the beard back on top um and I repainted this twig in here because here goes missing so I have to because at this point I'd already um had I blended? Yeah, I think at this point, yeah, at this point I had already merged the two together. So this is the point of where I'm almost like in tears. Because <laughs> I've already, I've already blended the two and now I'm going to somehow separate the two. And that's a heartache for any artist. I'm sure everyone else who's listening right now has, has felt that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I went round, got rid of it all, and then I did the twig and why is this sorry um added the twig and that's when we have our kind of multi background for me now this stands out as it's just the bird like your eye is solely on this bird and his protect protectiveness of his like little space that he's got going on um now this one I've kind of painted straight from the photograph. So I've used this photograph as like, as the photograph to paint from. Um, I used other ones for the background to like to help, especially when I came to this one, to help kind of create that kind of dense jungle vibe. Um, I Are we still there? Have I lost anyone? Oh, we lost you for a second. Oh no! Oh no! Where did you get up to? Um, I don't know. It just, just only briefly. Oh, okay. Whew. Okay. I cool. just want to let you know it's five minutes after the hour. Oh, um, okay. Just yeah, some people have had to drop off, but um, yeah, there's we still have a decent amount of people on. So. Okay. Well. I can, um, would you prefer we just go straight to questions and I can skip the, I can skip sh showing the, the background and we can go straight to questions? No, 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 no. Go ahead. Okay. Keep going, please. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll follow your lead. No props. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just moving the webinar thing out of the way. Okay, so I will, I will start waffling and <laughs> quickly go, show you guys a, um, a background because it's yeah it's what you're here for right um and yeah something that I wanted to show you guys now this is something instant you you can all try this is something um now the backgrounds can take me a few days so again please forgive the crudeness here because we're just going to kind of generally smash out something so you guys can see how this works she says that with so much confidence, but then we're back to this layer shenanigan and she's not used to it. There you go. I'm not used to it. There we go. There we go. Um, okay. So what you want to do in your background is you want to get, you think about the colors that are most important. Like, do you want it like thick jungle? Do you want it to look like skies? Do you want it to look like vast open, um, like desert? Do you want, do you just want to blur out some general field? Like if you're painting a horse, it's in a field or a cow or like a prize bull or something. Um, is it is it the fields that you want to show? So kind of bear that in mind when you're doing this. Um, I am just making something up as I go. Well, no, I kind of thought about what I want to do, but you can, you'll get the idea once once this comes together. 
Um, now I'm going to use quite striking colors, which will blend right down. So don't be afraid, because you can always redo this. Like this is this is one of the easiest things I can I can show you today, um, and it's one of the quickest. And it's also something that you can actually play around with and have fun the most, because it's not going to really it's on a different layer, so the pressure's off. You're not gonna like destroy your painting or anything like that. It's on a completely different layer. Um, so yeah, so you get your colors, you make them as dramatic as you, you want. I'm gonna throw some blues in here just to mix it up because it's, it's looking a little bit too bright. Um, and if this doesn't work out, beauty of the day, you just swipe it over, delete it, and, and retry. Okay, so I'll give this a look. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of time. There we go. So you've got you've painted in a general size, whatever size you want it to your things to be. Then you make the size a lot bigger. Yeah, we'll try this one. Now you use the color that you want to be most predominant in the whole thing. So if you want, maybe not maybe more the tone so if you want it to be bright and light use a bright and light one if you want to use it if you want this to be dark and moody use a dark and moody color when you're doing this right now so when you get this you're still on the blender, blender brush, bristle brush wow that is not easy to say um and you go over this i use circles you can do any way you want it, again direction is really important in this so if you use um I'll show you afterwards. If you go straight up and down, you'll see that it kind of gives this lengthy look, and you might not want that. Now, the bigger the brush, the bigger the swirls, so the more blended and blurred it becomes. Um, and you can just keep working on this. You just don't let go. Once you let go, then you're on for a different animal. But you don't let go for for a little for a little bit. Really go over go over stuff first. Um, there you go. That's very interesting, Rachel, that you yeah. do it all basically like this mixing part in one stroke. Yeah, mix it all together in one thing. I will go over this again because sometimes, sometimes you'll get it like here, I'll do, you can see, here, I'll do it so you can see. Okay, if I do that, can you see that it's got this like harsh line going on? Yeah, and you might not want that right next to like the eye of your animal. Like you've got to be aware. Like well, for me, I've got to be aware that the background is there to is a platform for the animal. So it has to it has to complement it. It has to push it forward. It has to push forward whatever the vibe is I'm going for. So if this is too harsh and it's right next to its beak or its eye or its whiskers or a vital point where everyone automatically looks at. You might want to change it a bit because they're not going to see the eye. They're going to see this stripe. Trust me, they will. People will do will do that, and it's 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 sad to but it, <laughs> it happens. Um, so you get this, um, and then you just go over it again. So if this is too light, what I'll do is I'll get I'll start slightly off off from where I need to be, and I'll start blending it back in. I would use generally use a bigger brush because it's you get more of a blended look, but it depends. If you want to have the jungle vibe that I've got on in, in the portrait the, the, on the right-hand side there, it's kind of dense. That means it needs this tight color. It needs to look like it's packed. It needs to look like it's, it's intense and everything's squished together and the humidity is through the roof and you're sweating buckets. It needs, it needs that vibe, you know what I mean? It needs that look. So I'm going around in circles and then sometimes I'm going around in straights uh, or just general directions. Like at the minute I'm doing an arch to kind of help smooth it all out. Um, this can help when creating leaves or if you're painting fields, like vast fields behind you, like rolling hills. Go at, again, it's direction. Direction and color, people. If you take it away from me today, it's direction and color. <laughs> um, see, now if I do, if I go straight up and down, it's really gonna give it this kind of vertical look. So if you're looking at painting bamboo, or if you're looking at painting maybe like a, a wall um, or, something, or a cave. There we go. So yeah, hopefully that was of use to someone. <laughs> yeah, 
for some reason you cut out again at the very end it might just be uh -huh. the processing power when you're presenting online with a stroke that long might <laughs> it might be sucking your power out um well you we well, have you know that is the the, the the last demo that is uh all i was saying was going up and down can really give you a lofty look so if you paint in caves or um if you paint in a, a, a blank like a wall go for up and down because this really gives the, the piece some length that maybe your animal hasn't got okay fantastic um there's a question i know you said that you use Corel Painter solely for your paintings, but do you ever go to Photoshop for anything else? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, that's a nope. Yeah, sir. Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> um, no, I, I, for, for, for Photoshop, I do use Photoshop, but the only reason I use Photoshop is if I make promotional t material or if I want to send um, stuff for catalogs. So if I'm because when you exhibit, you've got to create, a, you've got to send images for brochures, images for catalogs, stuff like that. So I will put the the complete image in Photoshop to do some promotional materials with. Um, but no, the, the 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 short answer is no. The whole thing is completely done um, in in Corel. Um, and yeah, no filters, no pattern brushes, no no image manipulation, no no nothing. Just Hey, I love, I love that answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is one last question, and Francisco is wondering if you have any time lapse videos, like painting videos. Um, I have, I'm in the works of making a video that shows um, the development of the piece over time. I can't do screen like uh, time lapses as such because the file sizes are colossal because if i'm doing if i'm like painting like if i get in the zone i'm painting for like 12 15 hours um and if i'm doing that for like <laughs> if i'm doing that for like 150 hours or something like that the file sizes get obscene like they get insane. right yeah um, i get that so even trying to, I've tried it because I thought, you know what, this would be amazing if I could do it. So even trying to um, like compress them, put them through different things to make them shorter and smaller, it's like, you, how am I ever gonna share this with anyone? Like it, it, it's, it's the mega, the absolutely mega. So I don't, um, for that reason, I can't really do time lapses. I do, take screenshots of my works and I'm currently putting together videos that kind of show you the step by step of okay I did this and then this is the next day this is what happens and stuff like that because I've, I've had that question before where people are saying oh can we just like see the whole thing happen and I would love to show that but at the minute it's just not possible with, with the size of the files. Yep. And I completely understand. <laughs> well, I think you did a great job because I don't believe that we have any questions unanswered here. But if anybody has a pressing question, please go ahead and enter it. Okay. But while, while people are doing that, can I, can I show something about um, my website? Or oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Please oh, do. Cool. Okay. So, um, as you see my works beforehand, um, and I've now got a, well, it launched in December, 2020. I'm um, sorry, my mind went blank a little bit there because it has been, 2020 is a bit of a blur for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's anyone else uh, like that for anyone else, but yeah. Um, so this is my, my shop and I've now got merch on there, which as of today is available in the state. So that was that's big news for it's big news for me, and I'm, I'm excited to share with that all with you. Woohoo! That's amazing. Those are so, so cool. Thank you. So I've got everything from biodegradable phone cases to uh, tote bags to cushions to face masks to um, uh, 
to t-shirts to small printed t-shirts to full full printed t-shirts um there's there's a whole load so if, if if anyone's interested in that by all means do check out the shop because it's uh during these uh, everton's galleries are obviously not are not happening right now and i've i've I love my shop. <laughs> Talk about um, loving your own work too much. I absolutely love. I love the idea that this this works. And uh, yeah, it's now available from today. So from your time now um, in the states for the very first time. All right, fantastic, and thank you for sharing that. You know, there is one more question. I lied. Um, <laughs> do you spend as much time on your backgrounds as you do the foreground? No. Um, my backgrounds I can do in like a couple of days. My, my The actual animal itself can take weeks, months. It's, yeah, they're, they're very different. The background is always a fun, not the whole thing is fun, but sometimes there's pressure on it. Like I, I put a lot of pressure myself to get it looking right and getting the mood right and that sort of thing. Um, but when I come to the background, it's just like this flash of color that helps me out. Do you know what I mean? It's just like I can I can lean back on the art a little bit and think, okay, this is this is just for fun. If it's just if it's the mulchy background, by the mulchy background I mean like this kind of one or that kind of one. When it's painted like the the water, uh, or if someone's requested like a certain background, then that takes a lot longer because the mulchy background can only take like a couple of days. Whereas a detailed background, it, it, it means I've got to put more paint and hours into it because I've got to make sure that you're dealing with basically um, kind of like another animal. You're looking at where the light is, how it reacts with the, the animal itself. Is the animal getting too overshadowed by the background, which is then you have to remove it and start again um, and that sort of thing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. This has been a really great session. Um, we still have a lot of people hanging on here, and oh. um, you know, I appreciate your taking the time to show us about your process, and congratulations on your store. I think that's really great that it's <laughs> you. So please, everybody, I put the link to her site. Um, we also shared that in a lot of our promotional information, but um, I can add that again to the follow-up email that you will receive that will link you over to the recording. And for anybody that joined a little bit late, um, I'm not gonna get that up until tomorrow morning, um, but we'll have that up on Sunday for you to re-watch if you join late or if you just wanna catch all the details. And Rachel, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Tani. That I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this, this has been, I've. Thank you to all who have attended and to everyone who stuck around. I really appreciate the support and the and the, the presence of yourself being here. Um, it's it's fantastic to see. Honestly, it is absolutely fantastic to see. It's made me smile from ear to ear. So thank you so much. <laughs>